Welcome. Hey, welcome everyone. Happy Easter. Yay. We're here. If you, absolutely. Yeah, he's risen. Amen. Amen. He is. So what time did everyone get up this morning? There's some tired people here, but it's for all different reasons. Some were getting up for their chocolate. I don't know. Some were getting up because they got here to serve diligently. Amazing, the guys who serve us this morning. Some people were actually just living in the moment of yesterday, going to see Noah and Jody married. It was so fantastic to see them married over at Hope Church. It was fantastic. We prayed for them last week. They got married yesterday, and the sun came out for them. Unbelievable. I had a, a joke from someone this week saying that, you know, we lost an hour's sleep, so you are all top, top people this morning for making it here on time. But actually, that hour meant we had an hour less rain, which was great. But no, we didn't. We had sun all yesterday, didn't we? Which is great. So let's, let's, we're going to welcome Jesus to be amongst us. We're a family. Come and enjoy today. Danny's going to come and preach. We're going to hear a bit about um, from Dave and Ali from their trip they've just had, which is going to be great. And we're going to be led in worship by Anna and the team. Um, but I want to just um, read out one verse, one, some verses which just land this moment. You know, there's stories that get handed down the generations. And, and there's some people start to tell something of the goodness of God and we get to hear it today. You're fitting into God's story because of some ladies who saw something and shared it with 11 disciples and then they shared it with others and down the history it's come to the point where it's come to our ears and we're part of God's story which is amazing that Jesus wants you to know his love and that it's Easter and that actually the tomb is empty and Jesus is alive. So let's, let's read this, and then we're going to go into worship. It comes from Luke 24, if you want to look it up, the resurrection. Now, on the first day of the week, at early dawn, the women, those ladies who had the message to share, the women went to the tomb taking aromatic spices and they, that they had prepared. They found that the stone, curiously, had been rolled away from the tomb. But when they went in, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were, back, while they were perplexed about this, suddenly... Two men stood beside them in dazzling attire. The women were terribly frightened and bowed their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He's not here, but he's been raised. Don't you remember that what you were told while you were in Galilee? That was the story that they were told. He is not dead. Don't look for the living among the dead. He's alive. Jesus is here today by the Holy Spirit. So Lord Jesus, we lift up today. Do you want to stand to your feet? We're going to worship him together. Holy Spirit, come and make it new to us this morning. Amen. Go for it.
risen from the dead. in a moment and it's got some words in it you may not recognize we don't use them over lunch and it's these words ineffably sublime so you need to know what we're singing ineffable means too great or extreme to be expressed or described in words unspeakable indescribable on account of being too huge for mere words to encompass it And sublime means a very great excellence or beauty, lofty, grand, exalted in thought, expression or manner of outstanding spiritual, intellectual or moral worth, tending to inspire awe, usually because of elevated qualities of beauty, nobility or grandeur or transcendent in excellence, inexpressibly... (laughs) supreme that's our God inexpressibly supreme we give you glory Lord Jesus you are ineffably sublime we give you glory hallelujah so we crown him with many crowns
the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but to save the world through him it's through Jesus brothers and sisters it's through Jesus if you're here for the first time and you've You've never heard this. He's for you. He's for you. He's for everybody. He's made a way now. You only have to come. Come to Jesus this morning. Amen. 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 Thanks, Tony. 
Yeah, Jesus, we lift you up. We say, God, you are oh, our Lord, our Saviour. You are to us ineffably sublime. Lord Jesus, thank you that, that you go beyond words. Lord, thank you, God, you give us gifts of the Holy Spirit. You give us different languages uh, that we could express what's in our hearts. Lord, I just pray, Father, right to this morning, Lord, that you would bring out, as we worship in, in volume, that uh, people would receive your gifts this morning. Lord Jesus, that people would be able, even this morning, be able to pray out. Let's just lift up his name. If you speak in other languages, let's, let's lift him up. He is ineffably sublime. You can't think of the words. Let's lift him up. Oh, God. Oh, God. We thank you, Lord. You're a good God. Oh, hora shara mandura. Come, Lord. Come, Lord. Oh, rara marishi kiki ara mandura. Oh, rara riana mandura. Mahariana mandura. Mandura marie. it when people won't stay silent because they've met Jesus. It's great. They just keep saying, oh God, I love him. That's what we're supposed to do. Jesus said, even if, you know, you silence these, even the stones would cry out praises to me. He deserves praise from the whole of creation, which includes us, each one of us, that we would live our lives in his glory and his honor and for him. Oh, Jesus, we dedicate ourselves to you on this morning. Thank you that you gave yourself for us. We dedicate our lives, Lord, that we would honor you, we'd worship you, we'd be a living person, a living brick in your kingdom, your temple, Lord, to just display your glory, Lord, and you have, you deserve our praise, and we lift you up today. Thank you, God. Amen. Amen. Well, do you want to grab your seats before the kids go out? That's great. We're going to keep praising. Danny's going to come and preach in a bit. But just before the kids go out, we're going to have... Um, if, well, if you're new here, even if you're new and watching online, you're so welcome to find us, Crawley Community Church. You've, uh, you've found us. We're a family church in Crawley. And if you want to know more, then we have a connect area on the website you can get through. If you want to in the room here, get to know us a bit more. We can hear your story. Then find anyone with a high-vis jacket on. They're really nice.
They're really nice people, the guns who like the high-vis, aren't they, Wendy? <laughs> and uh, go and ask them for a little, little green ticket to get connected and find out more, which is great. So right now, online, we're going to just switch over. So we're going to say bye-bye for a few minutes while Dave and Ali come up, and we'll come back to Danny and preaching in a bit with you guys online. But to that, right now, we're going to just go a bit into the... Let's worship, shall we?
in me. Let's sing that together, shall we? The same power that conquered the grave lives in me, lives in me. Your love, your love that rescued the earth lives in me, lives in me. The same power. You've been so patient, it's time. You, you can go to your classes and go and learn all about the good stuff you've got. We're going to just go back into one song, really, before Danny comes up. But, yeah, let's just say, uh, let's say hello to the person next to you. Share your name, if you don't know it. Share your name with the person next to you and say hello. And we'll go back into worship. Should we stand when you're ready? Unless you're still saying hello. And I love how God joins the dots so often. And Tony shared a verse earlier. Um, the verse that says, For God so loved the world that he gave us his one and only son. Whoever believes in him will live forever. And that's what we're going to sing now.
Savior, Jesus, we thank you that you are the only person in the whole of human history who died and rose again and is still alive today. And we thank you that you are living in us, that you are in heaven, that you are empowering us, you're transforming us, you're setting us free. Thank you, Jesus. It's amazing this report that we received now about our dear couple who are in Asia. Asia. You have no idea the difference uh, that makes when you are in the missionary field and receive visitor, visitors from your local church. So the fact that David and Ali were with them, so powerful, so beautiful. Very good morning. Once again, I have the privilege to share God's word with you in this Resurrection Sunday and I want to invite you to open your Bibles in Luke chapter 24. Yeah, it's in the screen. Luke chapter 24 is not coming to the screen. You need to read in your Bible or in your phone. And you, I will be reading here in the mic with you with my Antonio Banderas accent. If you have any English teacher present in this moment, it's a good moment for you to grab a coffee, <laughs> to not be present, or just to hold your tomatoes. Don't throw in me now, okay? And if my pronunciation is wrong, just pretend you understand. You're reading your Bible and be nice with me. Come on. Um, if you're not English speaker, uh, if you don't have English as your first language, you know what I'm talking about. You have all these silent letters. They are not for the mouth, they're just for the paper. I, I don't know why, I don't know why <laughs> we have this. <laughs> so, Luke chapter 24. I don't know, it's something around 13 verses that we'll be reading. Luke, two weeks ago, we, we were talking about the Gospels, the four Gospels we have in the New Testament. And we talked about the synoptic Gospels, and Luke is one of them. This guy, he wrote 54% of Jesus' life, just Luke. 27% of the New Testament uh, was written by Luke. This book was written around 63 or 70 years after Jesus was born. So it's a very old document you have in your hands and you're going to read now. Some things are just in Luke about Jesus, things that we know about Jesus. For example, the parable of the prodigal son, the lost sheep, the lost coin, Luke chapter 15, is just in Luke. Many other things. Luke is the only one who, who speaks about the, um, the childhood of Jesus when he was 12 years old. Only Luke. Only Luke talking about John Baptist or the, the, where, uh, how he was born and when he was born and the content of his message. Just Luke is a amazing gospel and we are going to read now one portion of the gospel that is only in Luke is 24 and to talk about the resurrection of Jesus verse 13 13 now that same day two of them were going to a village called Emmaus about seven miles from Jerusalem that same day which day the day of resurrection of Jesus. We are reading now Sunday morning. Jesus was rose from the dead. He was alive, but they didn't know about it. So they're just walking away from Jerusalem, seven miles. I don't know, three hours walk, two hours and a half. And they were talking with uh, each other about everything that had happened. What? The crucifixion. How Jesus died on the cross on, on, on that weekend, on that Friday. So they were talking about this. Can you imagine this conversation? Wow, did you see that moment, the nails in his hands? And, 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 and they were talking about this, walking together, going to Emmaus. Verse 15. As they talked and discussed these things which, uh, with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them. Now, this was normal. In those days, the, the, so the Romans, they built the roads with stones. It was a big 
technology for those days. And, and, but the roads, they were very dangerous. So it was normal. You keep reading the New Testament. People, they traveled in groups uh, together. If some, someone else was just coming, oh, where are you going to? I'm going to Emmaus. Let's go together. Because the roads, they were dangerous. You see, in Luke chapter 2, when Jesus had 12 years old, Joseph and Mary, they were going back from Jerusalem to their place in a group of people among relatives and friends. This was very usual. In Luke, for example, he talks about the parable of the good Samaritan. The guy, uh, he was um, the thieves that were in the road. So road was a dangerous place. So this third guy, this Jesus himself, came up to walk alongside them. But they were kept from recognizing him. Many questions here. Well, he asked them, he who, Jesus, asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. Verse 18. One of them, named Cleopas, asked him, are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? Where are you? You don't know nothing about? So the question is a full of here, uh, irony. Uh, it's a rhetoric question. What are you talking about discussing uh, as you walk? Verse 19. What things? He asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God. In all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over the, to be sentenced to death as they crucified him. But we had hoped, well, pay attention now, verse 21. We had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what's more, it is the third day since all this took place. In addition, in addition, some of our women amazed us. So they were amazed with the news from the women. They went to the tomb early this morning. This morning, so it was the same morning. But didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then... Some of our companions went to the tomb and found it, just as the women had said. But they did not see Jesus. Come on, these guys, they are surrounded by all evidences of Jesus' resurrection. But they couldn't understand. They, Jesus himself was walking alongside them. They couldn't see. The ladies talked about this. The companions talked about this. But they, they were still confused. 25, then he, Jesus, he said to them, how foolish you are. <laughs> I don't know if this happens with you. Sometimes I read in the Bible and I put my name there. So it's not Cleopas, it's Danny. And then Jesus looked to me and said, come on, you're so foolish. And how slow. You know that kind of friend you have, you tell a joke and after two minutes, the guy starts to laugh. And they're like, okay, it's me. If the joke is English, everybody in the room laughs and they take a few seconds to laugh. Oh, now I understand. So, how is low to believe all that the prophets have spoken? Did not the Messiah have to, have to suffer uh, these things and then enter in his glory? And now, 27, and beginning with Moses and all the prophets. He, Jesus, explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. So Jesus started to preach for those guys. The scriptures, the Bible, they started to speak, sing the Moses, the prophets. He was preaching for them. We are uh, finishing verse, um, verse, verse, verse 29. Yeah, no, 28. As they approached, uh, approached the village, 
to which they were going, Jesus continued on as, uh, as he were going further. But they urged him strongly, stay with us. Well, amazing phrase. Stay with us. Stay with us. Stay with us this morning. Stay with us in our homes. Stay with us in our church. Stay with us, Jesus. For it's nearly evening. The day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took the bread, gave them thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. 32, they asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened what? The scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. But when our hearts are burning, we don't care about, oh, it's too far. Oh, I don't have money. Oh, I'm too tired. When the heart is burning, you just go. So they, they <laughs> returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven and those with them assembled together. And last verse now, we're finishing, 34, and saying, It's true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Amen. Thank you for your patience to read this long session with me. Thank you. Death is silent. Burial is quiet. You, you don't understand how quiet it is until you, you have to bury a loved one. Friday, so Jesus died. And then we have all the, I don't know, we go to a church, and we have some ceremony, and then we go to the cemetery, and then at some point you have that very moment where you notice the deathly silence of burial. It's quiet. And Jesus, now put yourself in the place of these two guys. Jesus is buried. Buried? You say buried? Yeah? So Jesus is buried, cold and stiff inside the rock. So the tombs, they were like small caves. They used to put the body inside and close with the rock. He's buried. And with Jesus, buried all their hopes, answers, sometimes solutions they are buried. Hopes, horizons, perspective for the future, Marriages, um, faith, joy, buried on the tomb and silent. This was the situation and Jesus now is hidden. Sometimes God hiddens. Hidens? Hiddens? Is hide? Hides? Thank you. Yeah. Sometimes God's just, I don't know, not available. I don't know if you had this feeling before, when God's not there. When we have situations in our lives that looks like or sounds like and we feel like God is not present. God's not available. Maybe, maybe, I don't know, you have in your past painful Situations, tearful moments. Where was God? Where, where? Sometimes we don't say those things, but we feel deep in our hearts. Why, God, did you? I don't know. Allow this situation with in my life. No more miracles. No more walking on the waters. No more healing people. No more powerful speeches. Um, Jesus. Is hidden, is buried. 
I wonder if your faith operates when God is in silence. I wonder if we still believe. Because anybody can have great faith when God is just there. When my bills are paid and, and my fridge is full and I have hope and I have a beautiful family like this advertisements on telly and, and when we are going holidays to somewhere and when I am achieving all my targets and dreams when I am promoted in my job when I have money, when I buy a house when I have a new dog and all those things <laughs> it's amazing then we praise the Lord and sometimes we don't understand when someone is sad or or living hopeless and come on, God is praying. And then we have all these expressions and, and these cliches and these phrases. And, and they are true. But when is with us? When the abortion is in my family, when the sexual assault is in my family, when the atheism is in my family, when the divorce is knocking my door, when the the, I'm the hospital when I don't have solutions. And then Jesus comes to me and you this morning saying, I know you love me, you serve me, you like me when I'm walking on the waters, when I'm performing miracles. But when I'm quiet, can you still love me? Can you still serve me? Now, these guys, when you read the New Testament, they were normal blokes, normal people like you and me. They had normal lives, okay, wake up early in the morning, pursue my dreams, pay my bills, feed my kids. That's it. So this is life, okay? So we need to run, we need to fight, we have many enemies, and we are always in a rush and looking for something. And our soul is, is starving of something, and we are thirsty of something new. Some of us, we are just addicted in varieties, and something new, and new, something new, a new, new car, a new, new relationship, and something new all the time. We are running, running, running. And these guys, they were fighting to survive. They were under the Roman Empire. They were really poor. They were trying to survive, but they did have a hope of something. They were raised in those days with this promise. I know life is tough. I know it's not fair. I know we are struggling. But someday the Messiah will come. The Savior is coming. And come on, guys. Everybody loves a hero. Some of us, we, we even love politicians. We love athletes. We love heroes. You see Marvel films, millions or billions of dollars. We love heroes. We love to have someone to follow, someone to deliver our conscience and say, you can decide for me, or a pastor, or a priest, or a politician, or a footballer. Or We love heroes. And when you are raised under this promise, the hero is coming, and he will deliver us from the Romans, and we will be free, we will be rich, we, we will have no problems anymore. They had this expectation, and then Jesus comes. And Jesus was fulfilling all the promises of the Old Testament. More than 300 prophecies was filled in Jesus himself. So they just... Leave everything behind, their lives, their careers, their dreams to follow this main dream, this Jesus. Now we have meaning for our lives. Now we have a purpose. Now we have a joy. Now we have a future. Come on, let's follow him. Let's change the world. Our lives will never be the same because of Jesus, the Messiah. And they understood in this journey that now God was there with them. This Jesus is God. Now God has a skin, nerves, eyes. God is eating with us, smiling with us, walking with us, sleeping near to us. We are with him. God is here. Emmanuel, God with us. Come on, if God is with you in your bus or driving, sit in your car, you can face any trouble. So they, they had all these expectations. They had all these dreams. And come on, 
Jesus, you come and destroy Rome and the Caesar and sit in that throne. And I, I want to be, and you see these conversations in the New Testament. Some of them, they talk, I want to be in this, his right side. I want to be a minister. I want to be a very important guy. I want to be there with Jesus. Even a mother, a mother of, of two disciples, she came to Jesus and, oh, could you give a job vacancy for my two kids near to you in the palace? They had this idea about Jesus as this big hero. And then the crowd loved him. But suddenly when they realized it wasn't a throne in Jerusalem, it was a cross. And Jesus was hanging and bleeding between the sky and earth and between two criminals. No throne, big deception, frustration. And the same crowd who loved him now, they were hating him. He was under torture. They were mocking on him, laughing on him. So they just run. Now they are full of fear. And the feeling that came to their hearts is this. God betrayed me. He was not there. So God, are you playing with me? You gave me all this promise. I gave my life to you. And I start to go to that church with that guy with a weird accent. And then I went to the wicked way. And I even gave money to that church. And now I feel my life is still empty. I don't believe more in the same way that I used to believe in the very beginning. Because now it's just routine. It's just Sunday morning. And where are all those dreams and all that moment where I had expectation with you? Where are you, God? Because I remember someday in my life I was full of this passion and this fire. And I had expectation with you. I remember to pray for some stuff, but I never got the answers. You are just silent. You are not there. Now you understand a bit about the road to Emmaus. They just gave up on dreaming. They looked to each other and they said, let's go home. Let's come back to our lives. Let's, I don't know, this was a mistake. Three years walking with Jesus and let's just come back to our normal life, our small predictable life. We don't need all of these uh, dreams anymore, this small talk conversation about let's conquer the world, let's evangelize everybody, nah, let's come back to our lives. So they were walking back to emails. They left behind all the other brothers and sisters in Jerusalem. The church, the disciples, they were there in Jerusalem. If you cut the scene now and put your camera in Acts chapter 1 and 2, it's the same thing is happening. So Luke wrote, he wrote this Luke chapter 24, but it's the same guy who wrote Acts chapter 1 and 2 in the whole book. So I have a group of disciples there, the church is there, but these two guys in their minds and their opinion was much better to isolate themselves. There is no better place to grow or to, what's the word, refine your character than between brothers and sisters and the church. But I do understand some people, they just decide to, um, to leave, I'm not saying about to leave the church only, but I'm saying about even being here and have your own bubble and your own world, world and not to be very involved with people, to, to be isolate, isolated. Because maybe I don't want anyone confronting me. I don't want anyone saying, you don't need to go to emails. You are, you are wrong. Jesus is alive. No, no, no. I want to believe that Jesus is dead. I want to believe that my faith is not alive anymore. So when we are together, you have confrontation. 
You have people giving advices to you. And you have people saying to you, don't follow your heart. Your heart is the greatest liar. My heart is deceitful. So my heart keeps lying for me. I want someone to say to me, Danny, this is wrong. The word of God is saying this. You're going to this way. But I, just, I can have this opportunity if I am among the brothers and sisters. As I don't want to be confronted, I just will build my faith on my terms and I don't need this. So this is the road to Emmaus. You are not listening this from a guy who just read and is talking to you. I was this guy in the road to Emmaus. I was this guy with 25, 27 years old and feeling I was with 100 years old. Living, I don't know, felt that I had 50 lives into 25. Very early involved with churches and faith and full of dreams. 19 years old, finishing theological seminary. I want to preach and I saw so much um, injustice and pain and painful moments. When I was 25, I said, okay, let me take, hit the road, Danny, and never come back no more, no more, no more. <laughs> never, ever. And never be involved in churches again. And never be involved in leadership. No, preaching, no. So I was having my way to Emmaus. You see, these guys, they were not bad people. They were disciples of Jesus. And you can see their frustration here. In this sentence, in verse we read 21. We had hoped that he was the one. Wow, I had hoped. <laughs> Expectations, frustrations, pain. I don't know about you, but many times in my childish feelings, I was angry with God. Angry. How could you? Demanding explanations from God. Because I had to deal with... Um, the battles with my frustration. And this is happening here in Luke chapter 24. Frustration is this disappointment hidden in our chest. Is when disappointments, they, they, uh, disappointments grows within and, and start to become rooted in our soul and heart. And when you see, we just speak about those things and we are frustrated with God or with people or with relatives or spouse or kids or boss or everything. And we are in this frustration. I thought I would be further than this. I thought I would be better than this. I thought I would be happier than I'm now. I thought I would, would be married. I thought I would be, I don't know, with the better conditions or have my life together. I thought, I thought, I thought. So frustration comes from what we thought. And not only about ourselves, but many of our frustrations comes from the others. Some people, they're just frustrated, not because they're personal expectations, but because of someone else's expectations. Some of us, we just leave our life to receive acceptance or approval by someone else. So I have this American writer. He said this sentence. Frustration is a function of our expectations. And our expectations now are often a reflection of the social mirror rather than our own values and priorities. What he's saying is... I'm frustrated, I'm sad, I'm angry because I was trying to be approved by my spouse, by God, by my manager, by my teacher, by my friends, by my parents. I need acceptance. I need, I need, I live my life to please someone. So we have all of this inside of us. That's why sometimes we just take the road to emails. <clears throat> Very often, our hearts are kidnapped by the past. We are hostage of our, of our past. In this text that we just read now this morning, all the verbs, they are in the past tense. Verse 19, he was a prophet. 
Verse 21, we had hope. They're just talking about the past. Oh, I remember young man. I was full of God's fire in 1925. But now, oh, I remember I have these beautiful memories about my past. I was walking with God. Or when you talk with someone and you are full of, I don't know, joy or enthusiasm or hope. And this person says to you, uh, I know I was like you before. I know, I know the end of this world. Our past. If we had a good past, we feel like, oh, that those days are gone. Never more. I will live that experience again. And if you had a bad past, we think, oh, it was so unfair. And we feel guilty again and again and again for the same mistakes. We never forgive ourselves. And we start to talk about the old gold days or the beautiful moment. Everything was about the past. Now, put yourself in the road to Emmaus, walking with these three guys, and you were there listening to you. Can you imagine the conversation? So, do you remember that day, Jesus? And they are talking to Jesus. Oh, mate, you need to know if the guy was from South London with the Cockney accent. Yo, mate, you need to know. I don't know how to do. Hot water. Hot water and butter. You need, you need to know. We walked, Jesus walked on the waters. Do you remember, Cleopas? I do remember. And that day with the girl, she was that. Oh, we were there. We saw. He said for the guys, oh, this girl is just sleeping. Everybody was laughing on Jesus. And said, no, no, no worries. And he came, he went to the room and he said, come on, girl, just wake up, Talita, come. And she came to life. And Lazarus, after three days, all the miracles, all because in verse 19, they said he was a powerful prophet in deeds, in actions, in performing before the people. Is their view about Jesus? Is their memories about Jesus? But now, if you keep reading verse 21, but now is the third day that everything it's gone. No more dreams. No more mission. No more future. No more dreams for the next gener generation. No more church planting. No more mission. No more I want to see my grandchildren serving the Lord. I want to see the church growing. Let's go. No, no, no more. Just past. Kidnapped. Hostage of the past. How many times this happened in my life? Many, many times. Because the newspaper was from Friday. It was old news. There was a lot of things happening. They were not aware. They were surrounded by evidence, but they were not aware. And then the traveler has this question. Okay, what are you... Wait, wait, wait. Let me understand. What kind of conversation are you having around your table? What kind of thing are you talking with your spouse as you walk in your life, in your journey? While you are driving or commuting in a train to London to work, what kind of thoughts are in your mind? What kind of conversations you are cuddling and storing in your heart and feeding in your heart? Things about the past, just bad news, old news. That dream that didn't come true or why you cannot do this because you don't have the right conditions, the right money, the right surname, the right friends. You don't have the right network. You don't have the connections. You don't have the doors. Is that you're talking about? So let me say something for you. You are foolish. You are slow to understand. My friends, I came here this morning. Just to say to you, in Jesus' name, there is good news. There is another news. There is good news. The good news about resurrection. A new time. The problem is, we are slow. Our soul is stuck in five years ago, three years ago, 15 years ago. And that relationship... That abusive moment, 
you could be the victim or you could be the, uh, the cruel person, the one who, li who, who, lied, who lies, the one who betrayed someone, the one who never felt forgiven. And this is still in your heart. And what Jesus is saying is, guys, you were so late. There is new things happening and you have no idea. But instead to give the news straight away, he opened the scriptures. And, this, and he started to preach for them. Our faith doesn't come from our experience, come from the scriptures. And our experience, they are based on the scriptures. So the gospel, the word of God, yes, we are church, we believe in the Bible, in the whole Bible. And our faith is based on the scriptures. And Jesus, can you imagine Jesus preaching for you? And the most beautiful thing here is the whole church, they were together in Jerusalem. Where was Jesus? With the two guys walking to Emmaus. Because for Jesus, those guys, they were not backslides. They are not, oh, this guy is divorced. This guy is a sinner. This guy, I don't want nothing. Jesus was walking with them. I'm talking about you. I'm talking about me. I'm talking about the Jesus that wants to walk and to listen everything that you are carrying in your heart. Sometimes we speak with friends from work. Sometimes we take pills to sleep, but we don't speak with Jesus. Sometimes we complain, but we don't talk to him. And sometimes Jesus himself is in your lounge, is in your church, is in your small group. But we are not seen because we are blind by frustrations. Today is a resurrection moment, a resurrection Sunday. Maybe the life of Jesus, you need to be visited by the life of Jesus in your ministry Maybe some of us here have a call to the ministry and you forgot those, you forgot those things. Maybe you need the life of God invading your caves and your soul and, and the depths of your heart and bringing back your joy because he is alive. And then while he was talking and they were listening to, they stopped to complain. You need to stop at some point. We need to stop our opinions about everything. We need to stop to complain about everything. We need to listen to God's word and what he's saying for us. And they were listening, listening, listening. And then at some point they felt that flame. They felt their heart burning again. Is the resurrection. Is life coming back. Is joy coming back. Dreams coming back. Hope coming back. Jesus is alive. Everything is possible now. They were not lying for you. God never betrayed you. He is alive and he is here. And I know some of us, we need the life of God. We need to, we need to stand and fight again. We need to say, Stay with us. I don't know what to do with my life. Could you stay with me, Jesus? The most beautiful moment for me. Jesus was there around the table, not performing a big concert, around the table, sharing bread, intimacy. Jesus, could you Stay with me in my workplace, in my lounge, in my bedroom, between me and my wife, while raising my kids. Could you stay near to me, Jesus? Not, not in a crowd on a Sunday morning in the group of, they're nice, the church, but I need you with me around my table, feeding me, sharing bread. I really don't know if you are from the church for many, many years or if you're just arriving now. It's the same resurrection power available, ready to change you this morning. I'd love to pray with you now. 
I want to ask you in a silence to be stand, to stand, please. And, and we will pray together. I would invite the band as well, and Bill and Anna, to come to sing. Verse 32. Were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road? And opened this scripture to us. When was the last time your heart burned for something? Your heart was ablaze for something? Was passionate about God? When was the last time you felt alive again? Joyful again? I'm not talking about moments of happiness. No, this is too small. I'm talking about the life of God in your veins, in your heart. Jesus is alive, and, and we believe, so our faith, you, you need to have faith to have our faith. So we believe in a dead corpse to came to life again. And he is alive, and he is here. Can you imagine, if you close your eyes for a few seconds, can you imagine if Jesus is now standing before you and he is asking you what is in your heart what are you talking saying to yourself inside your home what kind of frustration how many frustrations or expectations are you carrying in, in your heart for, for the last few years? What are the painful memories of your past and your trauma that you still are storing in your heart or cuddling and, and making the maintenance, keeping alive in you that memories? ask you to pray pray for your own heart and to say the only prayer they had in this ver in this chapter that we read was stay with us stay with us Lord Jesus you are alive we want to celebrate your life and my prayer this morning is this stay with us we have here people that among us people Lord Jesus that they don't know what to do with their lives they don't know what to do with their memories it's so difficult to forgive and to forget we have some people that are just walking away and they were living on, on memories of the past you are life you are the resurrection and life. You can bring healing and life. You are walking alongside us. You are God with us. You are present. You are available. You are not in a tomb anymore. You are here this Sunday morning in Crawley to heal, to bring life. We pray for this in Jesus' name. I we'll ask for the band to play this song. And while they are playing, we still have time. If one, if you want to pray together, we'll be here for you and to serve you. But also, you are free to go to someone in this moment here now. Maybe someone from your family, your spouse or, or mother or father, I don't know, someone. And without explaining too much, but just say, could you pray with me? Or could you forgive me? Or could we start again? This is your moment with Jesus. Okay? Let's sing. Thank you.
Were, were burning they just start to run to Jerusalem back and the first the very first thing they did was to spread the news to talk with the other guys with the 11 and the first sentence of verse 34 is the first word is it's true he has reason it's impossible to remain silent and quiet when you have the life of God in your chest is it possible to remain in that Friday mood, on that Friday mindset? Oh, everything is silent. He's gone. No more dreams. It's impossible. Once the fire, once the word of God reaches your heart, you want to spread the news. You want to go. You want to run. You want to bring people because this life is in you. This is the life of God in us, in you. So my hope, my expectation, my prayer is for you this week to be under this impact, to be under this word, to be under this power, and to share with everybody, Jesus is alive, he's true, he was with me Sunday morning in that church, he was with me while I was driving home, he was with me around the table sharing bread with my kids, he was with me in my lounge, he was with me, I was washing up and feeling his presence, Jesus is alive, everything is possible, everything my friend, so your dreams, pray for your dreams, bring back your dreams, put on the table and tell everything to Jesus the life of God 
in your heart, in your family. In Jesus' name, God bless you. God bless you this morning. God, what a king, what a victory. Death is beaten. That, that enemy that we all have, we all have that enemy of death. It has been beaten because Jesus raised again and he's alive. Amen. What a day. Let's go and share it. Let's go and share it with each other. Let's share it with our families. Let's share it with our friends. Um, so yeah, if you're new here, we uh, grab a, a, a leaflet from the lovely Wendy at the back and she would love to, to have a chat with you to get connected in. Let's, um, yeah, let's join time together. If you want to give, the, the members of the church give. This is a great time to give while we're in his presence. But let's have some tea and coffee right at the end of the corridor. Thank you so much for coming. Thanks for joining online and uh, have a great day.